when we're talking about extracurricular activities we need to understand that extracurricular activities by far can be anything and everything that a student does in a daily normal life for example i love baking can that become an extracurricular activity absolutely yes how can students manage their time effectively to ensure that they excel both in their academic as well as extracurricular activities managing time is the utmost important skill every student should and it doesn't happen overnight it is small steps every student needs to balance their work and in fact you know helping them reach that particular height giving them that necessary push as and when which is required and i feel yes all these factors do play a role start early it's very important you can't start everything when you are in grade 12 to all my dear listeners out there a very good evening i am ann gracious your host for today representing icae welcome to our latest episode of our podcast friday series called beyond borders higher ed edition today we are thrilled to discuss maximizing opportunities leveraging internships and extracurricular activities this is something that every young scholar out there has been struggling whether it is important to do or am i too late to do it and lot more So we have a very special guest with us Miss Teresa Joseph. She is a well-known and a highly respected counselor with an excellent reputation earned over several years. She is currently working as a career guidance counselor at the Nahar International School Mumbai. Thank you Miss Teresa for joining in today and we are excited to have you with us uh, to shed light on this important topic here. So can you share a bit about your background and your experience with guiding students through their educational and career journeys? Okay. Thank you Anne for inviting me. Uh it's always a pleasure to talk to youngsters, especially ones who are uh planning or aspiring to take up uh opportunities within India as well as abroad. Uh when we're talking about extracurricular activities here, uh we need to understand that uh extracurricular activities by far can be uh anything and everything that a student does in a daily normal life for example i love baking can that become an extracurricular activity absolutely yes uh but it doesn't make sense to a career program that i want to do that does not matter as long as the skills that you develop during this entire process is what matters the most being persistent uh that's a skill that you develop not by just saying that i am persistent but by doing things consistency that's another thing that we ask our students to be very consistent in the way we want to do things you can't just pick and drop things you have only one particular extracurricular activity and that's absolutely fine not a problem at all we have students who are passionate about music and they've learned music right from grade 1 onwards that's fine absolutely no worries because learning music is a skill that you are developing by constantly giving time to it that means in your academic studies you are bringing about time for music it can become your go to activity when you are extremely stressed and trust me today students are extremely stressed getting admission to a normal university however easy it may look for we counselors and parents but it is stressful for our students and that's something that i feel uh, they are very important very very important because it shows the university that i am not only good at academics but i also have other skills that i can use to do things I completely agree here with you there is in fact I feel consistency is the key that you mentioned that they have to be consistent and go on doing it through and through and it's like a continued activity that they are doing now how can students manage their time effectively to ensure that they excel both in their academic as well as extracurricular activities because nowadays students are having lot more on their plate because they are having different curriculums that is available to them they have tuitions they have lot more activities that they already have to do so how do you think that they can manage their time and create a balance between them okay so uh, most schools having realized that you know extracurricular activities are rather a holistic application is what universities look at so if you uh, see most schools today 
do incorporate a lot of extracurricular activities within the school. So you have uh, sports, you have music, you have dance. Uh, some schools have other life skill lessons as well, like carpentry. It's very important, uh, baking for that matter, uh, gardening, you know, needlework. There are schools which offer all of these activities. Can they be added to your whole list of uh, extracurricular activities? Absolutely, yes. Now, there are questions about, I would like to do something, but I don't have the time. Now, that is a very, very crucial thing. Managing time is the utmost important skill every student should. And it doesn't happen overnight. It is small steps. Uh, every student needs to balance their work. Now, they need to understand that each one gets only 24 hours. And each student manages within that 24 hours. I will never say give up on sleep because sleep is very important. It keeps your mind active. There are a lot of people who talk about, you know, I sleep four hours and I'm super efficient. Trust me, not everybody can become that one person. However, prioritizing is very important. So if I know that I have to do everything, I need to attend school. I need to go for my extra tuitions. I need to... Uh, manage my uh, extracurricular activities. I also need to sleep. I need to take care of myself. I need to give time to my family. Now, all these are very important. Also, given the fact that schools today operate all the way till 2.30, 3 o'clock, the day is gone. So then how does the student manage it? Going to school is priority. Spending time with family is priority. Sleeping is priority. It all matters with the rest of the things. You don't have to have uh, music every day in your life. You don't have to play football every day. And especially for students who are in grade 12 and 11, they don't need to go and play every day because they need to know and they have to understand this fact that go getting to the university is very important. So mm -hmm. they will balance it that way. They have a whole of a Saturday, Sunday, and they can do it. Again, in Saturday, Sundays, they have extra classes, they have tuitions. But yes, you've got the whole day. It's not a full day school. So, and tuitions also, a lot of people have realized that everyday tuition does not help because they are learning in school. You will have yeah. twice or twice a week. And that's how you will balance the entire thing. Not everybody can. But yes, some of them do. True. True. And in fact, I feel... Uh, Every student, yes, as you said, equally gets 24 hours. Nobody is getting an extra hour. So it's up to them how they manage it and how they prioritize their activities and try to build something out of it. But yes, um, I love the fact how you said that baking, gardening, carpentry, and you know all those basic activities that students tend to enjoy and tend to do can be added as an extracurricular activity. Because... Uh, there's been this misconception amongst parents also and some students also because now that universities are looking at holistic applications, they feel that an extracurricular activity should be a particular sport or a particular, uh, you know, like a drama or a music or a, a piano or something of that sort, which is very dedicated as an extracurricular activity. And only that can be added and not these normal, you know, small time activities that students have been consistently doing in their growing years. Absolutely. And they tend to ignore that. And I like the fact how you highlighted it. Now, since we were speaking about extracurricular activities and internships today, so uh, how do you feel that students can identify and secure internships that align with their career goals? Now, in a meaning that it's not just because they have to do something, but yeah, it actually aligns with their choices with their future path. Okay. So now uh, India specifically, you need to understand most companies don't entertain students coming on board who are below the age of 18. Now, that is, uh, that's something that I have been facing in school. I have a lot of children saying that, ma'am, I approached, but they said, I'm below 18. I'm not going to get it. But the most beautiful part of this entire thing is you've got your parents who can support you. 
mm-hmm. each parent takes the initiative saying that i'm going to talk for my child my child deserves it he will learn from it each parent mother father either of them can talk about it within their organization because then they have a mentor within the organization who's watching over they're taking care of things mm-hmm. guiding the yeah. student and the internship is all about that to understand what is it that you have learned that can be applied in your place and uh by working somewhere and internship is all about working understanding mm-hmm. what is it that matters in your entire learning it always is a beautiful experience one students understand this is how i am going to apply my knowledge this is how a real work life balance can mean mm-hmm. this is how an office atmosphere is you know students when they are in school they get ease from deadlines they dress up the way they want to but there is yeah. a decorum that you need to maintain they learn discipline being punctual if you are expected to be at 9 you can't walk in at 9:15 saying that there was traffic it's your responsibility yeah. you need to be there and these are few sure. skills that they develop definitely yes knowledge can be applied they learn they improve on it however mm-hmm. these basic life skills matter a lot because ultimately we are studying to get into this work environment some of them may think that no i don't want to work i would like to become an entrepreneur now if you are not a disciplined person you're never going to bring about discipline in your organization so these things matter um i have had students of mine who um through their parents have got internship some of them are parents friends who have helped them out these internships really help the child understand that mm-hmm. i am on the right track some of them will say fine i realize this is not going to work for me i think i'm going to change my track it's good at least when you are in the high school you realize that fine this is not good for me then you're looking and exploring other areas as well and you may just True. get some True. in fact it's an earlier time to change and there's no regrets associated to it they have not missed out on many years so that's always the ideal time to do so now but there has been uh, i would say on and off conversation in the past that has happened and i have had young students come to me and say that you know uh, uh, my dad has a company as a business can i do my internship there and there are some universities in the past i'm saying about like around 7 8 years before where um, universities tend not to accept if they are working at the home organization but it's a very few universities but um, what what is the trend now and are the students allowed to do internships within their family grown businesses and how is it what you need to also understand yes there are universities which would clearly say that you know we are not okay with uh, you working with your father's organization but your father has a friend your father has yeah. needs your father may have a compatriot who is re- doing a similar business get into that mm-hmm. that's if you are looking clearly at identifying or um, this is the kind of job i want to do mm-hmm. you know, this is the right place and i will be guided and molded but that's okay uh, what is more important is universities clearly going out and saying that we are not going to accept uh, students who have done in their own organization that is also changing because now you can't say for example look at uh, the reliance if at all any of the children were applying to a prominent university what would have been their case now reliance is in everything what will happen in the situation where if somebody from reliance says that i want to go to this university and the university says no beta you are not going to apply because you worked in your father's company i'm sorry it yeah. doesn't work that's the i mean where would they want to send their child to study ever i mean work ever at all universities have understood they are not receiving children who mm-hmm. are only working class you would get students coming from business 
and I'm not talking about Fortune 500 companies. I'm talking yeah. about small-time business people also. Yeah. I want my child to take over my company tomorrow. Why will I not groom him right now? Why would True. I want to groom somebody else? True. So it doesn't make sense to say that. But there are some who are very, very particular, clear that they are not going to entertain. But then maybe that's not the right place for the child to be at all. Yeah, that's also the case. <laughs> okay. So now, now that COVID had hit in the last few years and a lot of things went virtual, from virtual classrooms to virtual doctor consultancies and whatnot, right? So what's the rise of remote and virtual internships that are now coming up for students? And is it valid for them to do? And is it that equally helpful for them to do that? So for me personally, I advise children only if they are having difficulty in managing mm -hmm. their time. Because then what happens is, uh, I'll give you an example. I have a student, in fact, three students. They did a summer program the month of June. And that was the month where my school has a summer break. So they did a summer program. And then they came to know about an internship with IIT. They, thrice a week, from 8 to night, 11 o'clock, they have been persistent in doing their internship. Now, that's how they manage time. These are the children, and today's generation by far I've seen, somehow, though I keep telling them sleep is important, you need to sleep, you need to sleep, they land up sleeping only around at 1, 1.30 in the night. When you know that this is their best time of work, you might as well encourage them to do. Now, that's also the reason why virtual internship will matter. I had another student. He's not a brilliant student. He was an average student. However, he did six internships at one time. Six okay, internships that's a lot. at one time. And I used to always say, this is not the right approach. You're cheating. You have only 24 hours. You will sleep. Chalo. Maximum six hours you will sleep. Yeah. Okay. You are attending classes, which is a full day program. You start at 8 and you finish at 2.30. And okay. the rest of the day, you need to sleep. You need to eat. You need to take your care of yourself. Mm -hmm. How do you manage? No, ma'am, I manage. I said, you're missing classes. You're sitting in class, but you're doing something else. Something else. So he said, ma'am, I do my research papers. His research papers were his submissions for his subject. Oh, okay. That's how you manage. He basically is into computers as well as investment. So he mm -hmm. brought about balance. He wrote programs for corporates. Wow. And it <laughs> So wow. this is purely because he is into a computers. Now for a student who wants to pursue medicine, mm -hmm. ideally, Virtually, she can observe what a doctor does. But if she really wants to show that, you know, she's been part of that entire... See, because it's like watching a movie then. You know, the emotions True. that come about, you feel it only when you are there. True. True. That's the reason for students who want to pursue medicine. It's better to be there. If you're only planning to work in a clinic or things like that way, that's okay. You do it virtually. Now, there are students who want to do psychology, pursue psychology as a career option. Now, for them, what kind of internship can they do? They can work with a psychologist, but that requires, by one sitting, you can't understand anything. And no. what a psychologist discusses is practically confidential. And you are just a youngster who's not even reached the age of 18. How much confidentiality do you understand? So they are not very comfortable. Then what can they do? There are so many options. Like we have psychology students. They are part of the student well-being team in the school. So you're doing mm -hmm. something in the school. Got it. Uh, when you're talking about internship, I want to pursue something in mathematics. Please mm -hmm. work with your head of the department of mathematics. Create lesson plans. 
makes a lot of yes. sense and schools will give there is no way that a school can say that no no we are very well equipped they all are looking for innovative ways and <laughs> who can create much better than the students today because it's their journey they know that this is not the way yeah. it can be handled so yes, yes. i personally feel uh you can do it every student does but there are exceptions they are the ones which we can't do anything for okay so i understood your entire thing where you said that it might be based on the areas that they're planning to enter and you know there are a lot of factors that depend on how whether it should be a virtual one or a in person one but yeah now that uh i feel one factor personally i feel one factor that is missing out when it comes to virtual is students don't get a chance to network with different functional people they don't get an opportunity to network with their seniors with absolutely like, you know people who are working in different functions different verticals in an organization which they would get a chance if they were they're offline in person because yeah. no matter you're an intern you end up networking with people and in this generation where networking i feel doesn't stop at any age group to stay relevant we all are networking we all are creating a brand I agree image you on that right and uh, i feel networking has also helped a lot of us have helped me and i feel someone who is parallel in uh, of the same age group also must have helped them is where we find mentors we find experiences that we have lived through and it has stayed with us in our career that has all happened with networking right so what do you think how important it is in both networking uh, networking in internships as well as extracurricular activities and tips on how they can find mentors through these experiences i really like the fact that you mentioned experiences very important for every student to understand that whatever they are being part of it's an experience for them to understand themselves better now there are students who go uh, do an internship for one day come back and say i've realized i'm not a work person i cannot work 9 to 5 it's not my cup of tea i need to be on the field so marketing is my scope there are students who say i don't like to talk a lot but i like to do the work that i am doing that means a desk job is what that person wants yeah. Yeah. so it gives an idea to these students that fine this is the right place this is not the right place very important uh, which is something that india is slowly opening up to you will have a lot of companies today encouraging that they do want interns because those small but important jobs you hand over to an intern the intern responsibly handles it i sure. had student, i had a student who did an entire research work for isro oh and nice that was used and he's so proud of it and i in fact i am very proud of it that Absolutely. you know it was something which was so small for that student but we were all excited and he got through i had another student who wants to do aerospace engineering went on uh to do some kind of uh, activity not with aerospace per se but with automotive engineering and uh, today he is with imperial these are small things for a student for parents and definitely yes the parents helped the child got that internship through the father's involvement mm-hmm. but the fact is he is at a place where he is doing a lot of work that can change for a lot of people true true so it matters what you do in your internship i work with somebody and if i am doing good work trust me my immediate supervisor is definitely going to help me connect with people true and that connection sometimes stays long 
like for me, when I, and this is very, very far off, I always believe that uh, wherever you go, whatever you do, you need to look up to somebody. It does not matter. Age is just not an important thing. He was younger to me, but I learned a lot from him. Or for me as a counselor, it was very important that the child is enjoying what the child is doing. Mm -hmm. For instance, I also had a student who went on to do engineering, very passionate, but left within the end of the first year. Oh, okay. And the reason was very simple. It was during the time of COVID that the child got admission there. She went there. Her learning was all online. Her learning was all online. So for her, she used to get the work, do it in the comfort of her house, submit it to her immediate senior, and he approved. She actually did not understand how her environment was, what her program required her to do. Got it. Sitting at home and doing work is totally different. That's also the reason why today, if you see, top companies want employees to come back. True, true, absolutely. You know, in the comfort of my house, I am my boss. But when I go <laughs> to a place to work, I'm not my boss. I have to abide within the rules of that organization. Yes. yes. Very important. Yes. Students always today feel they want to break rules. <laughs> it may be a silly rule, but there is a reason why that rule exists. Because sure. it is for the entire school that it matters. And if that yes. matters, it's as simple as, you know, I crib. I, I definitely crib. I said, I pay such heavy taxes, but there are no good roads. Why not? <laughs> but then the fact is, roads are important to me. But roads are not yeah. important for another person. For him, livelihood is more important. So True. the government is definitely looking at things. But yeah. there is a reason why things are happening the way it is happening. Now, for a student to say that, I'm perfectly fine working from home. You're missing out on many important things to work collaboratively. Yes. How to adhere to social norms. Yes. Very important. If there are people who go to work wearing house slippers, I'm sorry, there is a decorum that you have to maintain. Yep. And that's very important. These are few things during the time of internship that you learn. And nobody has to teach you. If you are a good observer, you observe and learn. Now, because you are a good observer, you are not going to get 10 on 10. However, you learn faster. Yeah. And that matters a lot. The faster you learn, the faster you deliver. And that matters. I completely agree with you here. In fact, students who get an in-person experience also understand code of conduct ethics our company runs, decorum, discipline, and I would also say a uniformity and a difference between uniformity and a hierarchy and what happens in an organization. That is the kind of exposure that they get. Now that they have got these experiences and they might have achieved a lot during their extracurricular activities as well. Now, since you have been a counselor, you have been interacting with admission officers what do you think admission offices tend to value more highly? Are uh, I would say, is it experiences per se or is it achievements per se? Okay, so um, now each country has a different set of requirement. You look at US, they're more holistic. They definitely value your academics as well as your extracurricular activities. So I would say 70% or rather 60% academics and 15% anything related to academics. However, you have a large chunk of 25%. You know that 20 to 25% is what matters also. And that's within your capacity, within your control. I mean, I am the topper of my class, but my board exams may not validate that for me. So what matters most is to 
highlight my extracurricular activities, which I have consistently been at. I have persevered over it. And I know that that is going to get me in. And that's also the reason why you will have sports scholarships. You would have these non-academic scholarships that value come into play. Countries like UK, they are pure academic oriented. Singapore, academic oriented. However, do they not value extracurricular activities? Absolutely, yes. So I had a student of mine who went on to do medicine, but learned the violin since grade one. She learned the violin and she was good at it. She gave her Trinity exams and she started her personal statement with dexterity, hand, fingers and dexterity. So did violin help her? It did help her. Whatever you do, if you are able to bring about a relation, association to what you want to pursue in, mm -hmm. will help. I think that is something, in fact, very remarkable reason being, just considering the student that you said, she got a hands-on experience because she, because she learned violin. She was very sensitive to a lot of things and she could understand it with just a single touch. And in the field of medicine, that is something that is very much required and that just Why? blended together and made her profile stand out. That is an excellent thing. Now, there are many schools who have already integrated a lot of practical experiences, opportunities in their curricula itself. But for the schools who have not or who have been thinking or who have already done but can do more, what is your piece of advice that you can say? How can schools really integrate more practical experience opportunities into their curricula, fit it into, uh, I would say, fit it into their system schedule and everything so that the students can get hands-on experience and more opportunities within the school arena? So I, I go back to that old statement. All study and no play will make Jack or Jill a dull girl or a boy. <laughs> but uh, see, uh, by far, sports, dance and music are an mm -hmm. integral part of every school syllabus. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, look at uh, state board curriculum for Maharashtra especially. They've got needlework. Yeah. Needlework. No, the stitching bit, yeah. Absolutely. Now that is for dexterity. Your finger yeah. movements, these are fine motor skills that you are developing. And we find it so boring. I found it very boring. Trust me. <laughs> I, I did. Very boring. But yes. did I learn something of it as I moved forward? Yes. Though I am not into needlework. But I know that skill of finally, you know, pulling the thread out of the needle is definitely helped me to concentrate. Very important. You're, you just can't pull a thread out of a needle by looking everywhere else. You know, that's, something <laughs> yeah. that, that's something that you as a student may not like, but it's an important skill. Yeah. Learning an instrument definitely, yes, helps you focus. You yeah. have to be persistent. You know, those kind of skills are not something that are taught in textbooks. You will learn only by doing. That's the yeah. reason why they say, you know, math is all about practice. If you practice, you understand the logic behind it. You, mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, creative writing that you are doing. Creative writing is all about your thought. But there are certain things that you have to actually practice and you know it's getting done. A winding machine. You don't wind it, it gets rusted. Humans are also along in those lines. So you have to do it. When you do, you would get it done well. Yeah. And I personally feel if the school is not doing, let's look at an area where the school is not doing anything at all. Then students also need to understand they need to develop. And that again matters on interests and the um, skill that the child wants to develop on. I like to write. Because of which I will tend to have an aptitude towards writing and reading and eventually I may say that fine I will become somebody in the field of writing uh, it can be journalism it can be um, broadcaster or anything that the child yeah. wants to do. but yeah. 
what you do is what you will ultimately land up becoming. So learn the right things. It will help. Again, do things at home. Best place. Baking happens at home. Learning music begins at home. Doing things. Very simple. Electrical work. It starts at home. You don't call an electrician. You look at it. It may not happen within that day. It may take a week's time. But at least you tried. And if you don't succeed, you know that that's not going to be. Or maybe it's the first time that you have tried. You try again. But if you don't try, it's not going to happen. Gardening, something that you will learn from home. Yes. Waste management from home. Go very, very local. Go from home to the outside world. It's possible. I had a student who got into a very good university and his extracurricular activity was only taking care of his grandfather. That's the only thing he said. From school, I had to go home, both my parents working, but I have to take care of my grandfather. Because of which, his academics was good. Taking care of grandfather, he used to sit and talk mathematics with his grandfather. <laughs> but he did it. Yeah. Get into the university of his choice, he did get. Consid See, when you are taking care of your grandfather, you need to be patient. Yes. Responsible, you patient, accountable. Yes. You're compassionate. You also sure. maintain a certain level of discipline because old, sick grandfather, you're timely giving medicine. You're taking yes. care of him. All these matter. And if you are an empathetic person, a university will understand that, boss, he was a good listener. But yes. old people tend to talk a lot. Talk he a lot, was a yes. good listener. These all things went in favor of him. So, if you start at home, there are a lot of things you can learn from home. Yes, you won't get a certificate for it. You won't have anybody validating it other than your mother or father. However, mm -hmm. there are skills you're learning from them. And yes, we are yes. talking about skill development here. They yes. say that if you every day get up at 7, you don't need an alarm clock to get up at 7. You are outside also, you will get up at 7. It goes to show that you learn something at home. So it does not matter whether you get a certificate. You need to understand, have I learned something out of it? Because if I have learned, I will also apply. And that is what matters. Completely agree with you here. In fact, uh, there are a lot of students who have tend to be responsible for their age, even beyond that they have showed some account of uh, some amount of accountability and responsibility and have proven themselves because of which they, they I would say their application, their profile has stood out to a university officer yes. and it has worked out for them. Now, because you were mentioning skills and, uh, you know, there are a lot of skills that the student develop and during an internship activity or an extracurricular activity or during a home learning experience and a lot more, which they have not learned from a classroom, I would say from a classroom teaching, but outside that. Can you list down few of those specific skills and how they can help to be translated into a real world job opportunity or a career advancement? Curiosity. If you're not a curious person, you're never going to read, you're never yeah. going to explore, yeah. and you're never going to find out. Yes. Because I'm curious, I will want to know what is happening in an office. Mm -hmm. Because I'm curious, I will go out and look. I may get rejected one place, two places, maybe a hundred places, but I am going to get accepted someplace. Yes. Because I'm curious, I'm going to start early also because I know that I'm going to get rejected. There are students who ask questions. Please, this is a humble request to teachers. I know your curriculum, your syllabus does not get completed if you only answer questions to curious questions. You know, but the thing is, this is the way a child learns. Yeah. And if that is going to be curbed, 
then the child sets in with the knowledge that okay asking questions is not the right way of doing things which is not that every child has to ask questions and you need to give that freedom to the student to ask questions so because the answer to it is very important for that student's next step towards a career maybe it will say yes this is what i want to do or fine i don't want to do this i want to do something else mm-hmm. at least that student gets clarity sure and given the fact that students have so many options today so many options i mean i'm they have to study they have to mm-hmm. balance everything together and they have options as well it is really really overwhelming for a student and i really appreciate the fact today students don't get misguided still go the right track goes to show a lot of perseverance on that student's part yes children are so clear that this is not what i want to do and this is what i want to do very very important and definitely kudos to parents and the teachers who are working with the student but it matters ultimately it does. when a student decides that this is what i want to do there's an entire group that is supporting that student to take that call as a counselor i have seen students who don't have any support but rely only on the teachers who have got extreme support both teachers family relatives all chip in together and that student blooms true true and ultimately that is what matters yes in fact um, i feel yeah because consistency curiosity perseverance everything together builds a student and in fact i also feel that yes uh, family relatives teachers everyone plays their own kind of a role in shaping a student in blooming a student and in fact you know helping them reach that particular height giving them that necessary push as and when which is required and i feel yes all these factors do play a role now what is the final piece of advice that you would like to give all our young listeners out here the students who are looking to maximize their opportunities through internships and extracurricular activities start early it's very important you can't start everything when you are in grade 12 mm-hmm. you know and frankly it is also very difficult for them to understand maybe in grade 9 as to what i want to do mm-hmm. however parents also need to be part of this journey with the child teachers have to understand that why history is important going forward why geography mm-hmm. is important going forward i may not physically or rather uh take up that subject as a career option but it plays a very important role when it comes to if i want to do geopolitical mm-hmm. sciences tomorrow i need to understand what geography is all about i need to understand where the countries are placed what kind of climate what kind of weather very important i want to be a librarian i need to understand history i want to take up mathematics geography mathematics a very strong combination now this if the teacher is able to bring about in class i think it will become better for the student grade 8 onwards students will realize that yes if i take up these subjects it will lead me to this place and i believe a holistic learning environment matters a lot you can't isolate a student clearly saying that you take up only commerce nothing else matters sorry no there are some children who are very clear i want to do only medicine yeah. and for them perfectly fine take up only the sciences go forward but then when you are only taking up sciences and medicine is your pathway then you need to validate that that means you have to also understand that sacrifice is important a doctor sacrifices a lot being patient is important yes managing time is very important these are skills that university reps will look 
medicine requires you to do interviews. At the time of interview, the questions that are asked, ethics matter a lot. Because if you are a doctor, you are always fighting for a life. Guiding the patient in the right way is very important. Now, if you don't know all these values, trust me, it doesn't help. I mean, you may become a doctor, but what kind of a doctor? Mm -hmm. So you start early, you will understand things better. You start early, it will also give you clarity to, un you know, identify this is the track or this is not the track. Rather than, you know, you complete your entire undergrad and your postgrad and you say, fine, I think I did, did a big mistake. This is not my line. It becomes too late. You will start early, you will know that how important a friend's advice will be. I chose my line only because I got enough lectures from my father, my father's uh, colleagues. All of them gave me that guidance. It's another thing that sometimes too much of advice is also harmful. You should be able to discern the right thing, but it matters a lot. It definitely matters as to how you start early, you prepare. You're preparing your entire journey and there will be blocks, but you should be able to stumble across those blocks and move forward. I mean, if there are no thorns in the stem of a rose. You will still not, you know, have that kind of feeling that it's a rose. The fragrance and the feel of it is totally different. Thorns are important. Yeah, I, and I and I also feel that you know it's a very popular saying that we say life is not full of bed of roses. So yeah, some thorns are necessary. Yes, and in is. fact, yes, uh, I would say that's an excellent advice. Also, that you are given out to the students that they have to start early because we, um, as counselors, uh, and a lot of counselors have also said that you know where students miss out on certain timeline, they miss out on a certain phase because they didn't start right on time. So yes, starting early is the key and they have to do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Teresa, for highlighting about consistency, about perseverance, about how curiosity needs to be, you know, given a bit of a fan for the students to grow in. And then they have to start early and a lot more. And also you have brought in a balance about how homegrown or their daily life activities can also be considered as an extracurricular activity and they can use it if there is, again, consistency in what they have done. They have learned some skill set associated with it and a lot more. And also the importance of internships. And yes, to the parents out there who are listening to us, I would always say, please help the students to get the right internship. Let them start early. Let them get that real life exposure and get an experience of of how the real world works and let them make a choice on what kind of careers then they need to be taking up. So thank you again, Ms. Teresa, for joining us today and sharing such valuable insights. Your dedication to counseling and leadership is truly amazing. I've been watching you for the last few years now and we appreciate all your time and uh, that you came in today and we look forward to seeing continued positive impact of your work in the education sector. And to all our young listeners out there, thank you for tuning in. We hope this episode has provided you with some useful information. And ICAE has more updates for you to support you in your educational journey. Stay tuned in for more episodes of Beyond Borders Higher Ed Edition. Until next time, this is Anne Gracious signing off. Have a great day. <laughs>